Hi, I'm Charles Band, and this is Full Moon's Video Zone. Retro Puppet Master, uh, a new departure for the Puppet Master series. I hope you all liked it. It was a big film for us, turn of the century setting, a young uh, Andre Toulon, and of course we designed uh, all new puppets, or I should say old puppets, since they are the precursors of the uh, puppets as we've known them for the last uh, six Puppet Master movies. As you know, we're in the action figure business, and all of these uh, characters will be available as action figures. Uh, one of our plans, of course, is to eventually wind up with so many characters from so many of these films that we'll begin to team them up and, uh, and pit them against each other. And the first film uh, of that sort will be out next year in the year 2000 called Puppet Master vs. the Demonic Toys. So we'll have some fun with that. And uh, we have Ragdoll, which is our first urban release under the new Alchemy label. There'll also be a CD out um, with a number of songs. It's a CD compilation that'll be out towards the end of the year, maybe in January. As you can see behind me is the key art for the dead hate the living. This is a real return to the classic uh, straight horror zombie movie. We have some wonderful effects. Uh, Dave Parker directed this movie. I think did a great job. I've seen some of the footage that's being edited right now, and it's uh, really scary and a lot of fun. Uh, we have a new Trancers movie. It's exciting to have uh, Tim Thomerson as Jack Death uh, come back, and we're also hoping to have another Dollman film, uh, which means we may work with Tim twice next year. But uh, all in all, it's been 11 great years for Full Moon, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Video Zone. Journey back in time as Full Moon tells the story of how Andre Toulon became the Puppet Master and how the puppets fans have grown to love didn't always look the way they do now. Retro Puppet Master. I would like to welcome you to the real world. A world of magic, of gods, and of monsters. For effects artists Chris Bergschneider and Jeff Farley, the daunting task of creating six new puppets based on Charles Band's original designs proved to be a welcome challenge. I got kind of excited, at least, because I was getting a little sick of seeing all the old puppets, and they were starting to get a little... You know, I think they were starting to get a little tired. You know, I think the public was starting to get tired of seeing them, too. Um, Yes, yeah, the nice thing about sequels is the opportunity to keep an idea alive yet with some fresh avenues. And the thing, uh, I had to agree with Jeff, that the advantage to making you know, new characters and some, how would you say, historical or ancestral versions of some of the ones we know, like, like Pinhead or uh, Tunneler or, or uh, Retro Blade, um, those were kind of fun, but the new guys like Dr. Death and Cyclops. Yeah, and the Cyclops guy, yeah. The Cyclops is one of the new ones that's basically an older grandfather uh, perhaps a great uncle to uh, people like O oh, Torch or um, Decapitron, which are the more current characters. But it's still a lot of the same vein where you have somewhat malevolent action going on with some really cute characters. I'd have to say there's always an apprehension when you're playing around with established icons, no matter what it is, whether it's you know the new Enterprise or a new Coke bottle design or a new a new puppet, especially like a retro tunneler something that somebody has already seen before, you do have to keep a certain flair. It's like we're redesigning the Frankenstein's monster. You've got to keep a certain touch with the grounding with the original designs, yet we're, the nice thing was we were able to take it in, an, in a new direction and to really give it some things that made them, as far as I think Jeff and I both felt, more puppet. They, they really looked more like they were puppets and not perhaps little toys or things like that because in, in actuality, more so, I think, than in some of the other films, you get to see these guys worked as puppets and treated as puppets. Don't you know, my friend? Smell the sulfur. Feel the heat of the flames. We could be nowhere else but hell. Um, as far as the design went, though, the, we, kept, we kept things pretty, pretty much the same as far as, like, the look, um, the heads um, I sculpted uh, to retained as much as the original idea to keep it uh, you know, something that Charlie could see that was followed through from, from start to finish. Yeah, the original artwork was pretty well defined and it helped us a lot in as much as Charlie was very focused as to where he really wanted these guys to go. He did want to stay away from some of the more 
garish or um, not not realistic attempts, but more the modern the modern turns that some of the puppets had even for their time periods. That some of them seemed a bit, you know, highly evolved for the 1940s, whereas Charlie was very uh, very concerned about making sure they really really fit the period. Six shooter and blade. Sergeant. Doctor Death. Cyclops. For the actors, shooting this latest adventure in Romania added an authentic atmosphere for which to work in. Everything, the architecture, the the, uh, the spirit of the people, I think it's different than American films. Uh, American films are very slick and uh, good-looking for the most part, but this, this brings the old world to it, and that's what it needs, the old world. It's not just a horror film or a thriller, it's a love story, too between uh, Toulon and um, Ilsa and their loyalty to each other. So uh, there are many dimensions. Is the old man mad? Or is the young man a fool? Look over there, young man. Yeah, the one thing that we uh, will not, that we did not have on this was um, the incredible, uh, I would just say, assistance or addition of uh, somebody like Dave Allen to do stop motion. These were all done literally as puppets. Um, they were in some scenes they're rotted, in other scenes they're uh, cable controlled servo mechanisms, in other scenes they're actually wired with as many as five and six and eight marionette strings. You know you've got limitations. You've got a certain amount of time, and you have to make something in one way or another practical it has to be you know it has to be created one way or another whether it's with a wire or a stick or just something smeared on front of the camera lens but yeah. a 15 day shooting schedule doesn't allow you that much time especially in Romania in the winter um, it was it was a little tough the highlight for the cast and crew was the return of Guy Rolf as the elder Andre Toulon it was funny because, um, as as it is with any of your top end players, they're in for a very short period of time. They they're like hitting in. They come in, do their job, you know, they're taken care of, and they're gone. But uh, when he did come in for his scenes, um, that you see him sort of in the very first uh, part of the film, where he's coming in out of the cold, 
and opening the trunk in the abandoned, uh, in the little abandoned tavern or the room there, uh, we were literally coming in out of zero degree temperatures into an unheated sound stage. You could see your breath in the stage. Um, it's the same old box that was there when he, you know, that they'd used uh, before. And it almost seemed like when he sat down, when he walked in and opened up that thing and started talking to them, like he hadn't missed a beat. And it was, it's fun to see that kind of familiarity you know, or professionalism, whichever it is. That's true. But um, he did seem like he, it, it almost seemed like he knew this character from before and it was just like, this is just another page that he never got to the last time he was in front of the camera. Greg was very excited, um, it was very exciting to work with in some ways because he did add a young, a young shot in the arm to the character because we've all known Toulon as this wise old sage who's had a, you know, a terrible existence for at least the last 50 years of his life. <laughs> you know, at least in the first six movies, yeah. he seemed like the poor, the poor old man, you know, went through some serious grief. And this is a period of time where he's young, enthusiastic about what he wanted to do, but very quickly learns this is now a responsibility that's going to take him a long time to master. And even he knows, I think, at the end of the first movie, he's got a long trip ahead of him. And so it seems like we've got at least 25, 35, 40 years worth of uh, time to catch yeah, up exactly. on. Exactly. It's sort of like, uh, yeah. To, to sort of become sort of like the, too long in the early years. Yeah. Retro Puppet Master. Proof that sometimes old ideas can be more exciting than new ones. From Full Moon. Travis's billion dollar loss is our billion dollar game. Mr. Harrison, you. I must now inform you that I am extremely displeased. Your failure compels me to take direct action to remedy this dire situation. Now those idiots think that we've checkmated Virgil Travis, but I know better. He's still in the game. Virgil Travis is going to try to eliminate all of us. These are my latest acquisitions. Don't think of them as competitors. Think of them as new weapons. Who's first? So, here we come. <laughs> Mr. Mascara, let's begin the sequence. somewhere normal doing something normal all of a sudden you got this this thing in your brain this compulsion yes this compulsion it tells you to drop whatever you're doing and get here as fast as you can any way that you can and you don't know why you did it or why you're here that's exactly the same deal with all of us she's the last the sixth one brought together for a deadly purpose the first age of fire and blood shall come again. Three of us to do the dying, and three of us to do the killing. 
controlled by an ancient evil. One of us is dead. One of them is alive. To bring hell to Earth. brought it to life by killing Tina. You're killing us! Totem 